This is going to be the next episode of God's Game of Thrones. And we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects in the Bible. We've, we started way back before the book of Genesis. And we've made it all the way up to the second coming. So go back and watch all those episodes of God's Game of Thrones. We've made it up to the second coming. And then after this one, I'm probably going to do one on the millennium and eternity. And then this season will be over with. And then I plan on doing another season of this series where I go through the kings of Israel and Judah. So that would be season two. I don't know when I'll start that. But here in Revelation 19, starting in verse 11, it says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon, he, upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. So at his first coming, he came on a donkey. This time he's on a white horse. So what do we see at the second coming? The first thing, we see a white horse and white horseman. At his first coming, he came on a donkey. This time, he's on a white horse. At his first coming, he was a lamb. John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God. This time, he's a lion. Revelation 5.5 5 calls him the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's a lion that comes to make war. It says, In righteousness, he doth judge and make war. He makes war in righteousness. Exodus 15.3 says, The Lord is of man of war. The Lord is his name. Revelation 19.12 His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. At his first coming, he had dove's eyes. Eyes of dove. Song of Solomon 5.12 Describes at the first coming, he had dove's eyes. At the second coming, there as a flame of fire. At his first coming, he had a crown of thorns. At the second coming, he has many crowns. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. They're not going to crucify him again. They're not going to be able to put a crown of thorns on his head. He's got many crowns. At his first coming, they blasphemed his name. They said, let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross in Mark five or in Mark fifteen thirty two, but at the second coming his name will be exalted, and he's got a name written that no man knew but he himself. Philippians two ten at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. If you haven't believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you haven't believed on his name, that's the best decision you can make because every knee is going to bow to that name. Revelation nineteen thirteen, And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. At his first coming, it was his blood being shed. Now, it is the blood of his enemies. He's clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Jeremiah forty six ten. For this is the day of the Lord God of hosts, a day of vengeance, that he may avenge him of his adversaries, and the sword shall devour, and it shall be satiate and made drunk with their blood, made drunk with their blood. For the Lord God of hosts hath a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. So it's going to be their blood being shed this time. The tables turn. He who laughs last laughs best. Revelation nineteen fourteen, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. What do you have at the second coming? You got white horses and white horsemen, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. At the rapture, he came to get us. And when you saw the episode of this about the rapture, that's when he comes to get us. Now here's the second coming where he comes back with us. And we're also on white horses and glorified bodies. And in Jude verse 14, it says, And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. So you have white horsemen. That's what you see at the second coming. Next, you have weaponry. Revelation 19, 15, And out of his mouth goeth the sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. The weapon is the word of God. With this he will smite the nations. 
We possess this same weapon. You hold it in your hand right now. If you're following along with me, you hold the same weapon. Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the biting asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Psalms 149.6, Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Do you have a King James Bible? Ephesians 6, 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Some hold the weapon in unrighteousness. Romans 1, 18, for the wrath of God is revealed, again, revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. Do you trust your weapon? Are you trying to change it? Some people hold it, the King James Bible in unrighteousness. They're trying to change it. But we got a perfect Bible, the perfect weapon. We're going to have weaponry on white horses at the second coming. Next, what are you going to see at the second coming? You're going to see wounds. Jesus still will have the wounds in his hands and his feet and side in his glorified body. Thomas felt the wounds after Jesus resurrected. And that's when Thomas believed, when he saw Jesus in his resurrection body and he felt the wounds. In Zechariah 12, 10, it says, And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Zechariah 13, 6, And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thine hands? Then, he, then shall he answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. There's still going to be wounds. At his first coming, his friends, the Jews, rejected him. At the second coming, they believe on him. Romans eleven twenty five. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you, you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Romans eleven twenty six through 27 And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. At his first coming, he was wounded. Now he wounds his enemies. Second Thessalonians 1, 7 through 8. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Imagine the Lord Jesus Christ. Heaven opens. He's coming down out of the sky. They're going to look on him whom they have pierced. All kindreds of the earth are going to wail because of him. Imagine, like the Pac-Man game, the Lord just comes through consuming everything in front of him. Revelation 19, 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. He's going to smite the nations. He's going to be given the wounds this time. They're not going to crucify him again. As my pastor always says, they're not going to crucify him again. Psalm seventy eight sixty five. Then the Lord awaked as one out of sleep, and like a mighty man that shouteth by reason of wine, and he smote his enemies in the hinder parts. He put them to a perpetual reproach. That's where you get to saying, I'm going to kick your hind end. He's going to smite them in their hinder parts. Habakkuk 3, 12. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. When you're mowing your lawn... This picture's the second coming. The Lord is going to cut through the enemies as easy as your grass is cut. I've never even changed the blades on my mower, and it still cuts the grass. Imagine the Lord Jesus Christ just cutting through people like grass with the most sharp blade, the sharp two-edged sword. He treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God in Revelation 19.15. The blood will be up to the horse's bridles. Isaiah 50, uh, 63, 6. And I will tread down the people in mine anger and make them drunk in my fury and I will bring down their strength to the earth. So you're going to see white horsemen, white horses. You're going to see the wounds and you're going to see there's going to be witnesses. Revelation nineteen sixteen, And he hath on his vesture 
and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. They're going to see Jesus Christ taking over in glorious apparel. On his vesture and on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There's going to be people literally witness this. It's going to be more spectacular and more mind-blowing than anything anybody's ever seen on TV, at the movies, on the big screen. This is going to be in your face. You're going to witness this. Isaiah 63, 1 through 5. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I speak that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. At the first coming, they stripped his clothes. In John nineteen fourteen, they parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. Now he strips them. Now he's going to strip them of what they have on. They're going to be naked before him. Nahum 3, 5, Behold, I am against thee, said the Lord of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will show the nations thy nakedness, and the kingdoms thy shame. At the rapture, he's going to meet us in the air. At the second coming, he not only comes in the clouds, but also touches the ground and every eye shall see him. There's going to be witnesses. Revelation 1, 7, Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. Revelation nineteen seventeen, the enemies... They're going to become bird food. Revelation 19, 17. I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. And there's going to be people that see this. They're going to witness this. The enemies become bird food, where you get the saying, For the birds. After the rapture, you have the judgment seat of Christ, you have the marriage supper of the Lamb. At the second coming, you have the supper of the great God. Another difference between the rapture where he comes to get us and the second coming where he comes back with us is at the rapture, you get the marriage supper of the Lamb. At the second coming, you get the supper of the great God. Matthew twenty four twenty eight says, For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Matthew twenty four twenty nine through 31, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. At the rapture he gathered the church. At the second coming, angels gather the elect, the Jews. Revelation 19.19. 19. Revelation 19.19. 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Notice they're still gathering together against him. Some things never change. The Pharisees and Sadducees got together because of a mutual hate of Jesus Christ. These people are getting together because of a mutual hate of Jesus Christ. There's going to be witnesses of this almighty God coming down out of the heavens. And they're going to witness their own killer running straight for them on a white horse. And they're going to be trampled. In the alien movies, the nations gather together, despite their differences, to kill the visitors from outer space. Where do you think Hollywood gets their ideas? You're going to see the real visitors coming down. Jesus Christ and thousands of his saints, his holy angels with him. And the nations will gather together against them. Gather together against the visitors. But we're not visitors. Jesus Christ is just coming to take what's his. He's coming to take over. He's not coming in peace this time. He's not going to say we come in peace. He's saying I'm coming to make war. Revelation 19 through 21. You'll see enemies of the Lord 
cast into the lake of fire. It says in Revelation 19, 21, And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceedeth out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. It, go back to Revelation 19:20. This is Revelation 19:20 20 through 21, where it says this, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought, wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive, into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. They're cast into the lake of fire. The birds are going to feast on their carcasses. At his first coming, he took our hell on the cross. At the second coming, he puts men in the lake of fire. He, ta he puts men in hell. After the rapture, Men are deceived. After the second coming, the deceiver will be destroyed. After the millennium, all the unclean spirits and the devil are going to be tossed into the lake of fire. After the second coming, the devil is going to be chained for a thousand years. He's going to get out for a little while. But then, after that, no more devil. He's going to be in torments for all of eternity in the lake of fire. And this is the second coming, which every preacher, every teacher should preach and teach on very often. I try, to, I try to teach on this at least every couple of months because this is the greatest subject in the entire Bible. And this is God's Game of Thrones where you have the king coming to take over, take what's rightfully his, and sit on his throne in Jerusalem, the throne that the devil wants. He tried to get Jesus to fall down and worship him and take the throne early. But Jesus Christ knew that he's getting the throne anyway. anyway. So he's coming down pretty soon to take what's his.